Hey everybody, it's Trace from Guitar Tech Corner here in Ventura, California. I'm doing a touch up on a custom Ibanez 8 string guitar that took a nasty little ding. You can see that right there. And what I like to do with polyester finishes, since uh, acetone doesn't melt it or hurt it, is come in and put a little wet coat over the whole ding. This says two things. One of is it cleans the ding real well but it also shows me that if I put any liquid over it how much of the cracks and the fissures and the little chips are going to disappear well hardly any did so I'm going to come back with a black sharpie and I want to pinpoint all the little areas that I noticed when it was wet and then take a q-tip with a little bit of acetone and wipe most of it off so now what I did is I just penetrated all the edges and all the little tiny cracks with the sharpie black and I'm starting with the, the finish itself. Now I'm going to use a fill and finish pro formula. This stuff is great and I like to put it on a, a string package, anything that's not going to melt. This way I have a real good way of being able to see exactly what I'm working on because I'm going to put it on the, the instrument itself. I'm going to use a wooden toothpick and I'm going to bend it on the side of the bench or on a piece of sandpaper to kind of give it a little more surface tension to hold onto the finish. That allows me to get a little more finish and hold it and put it exactly where I want. And since it, you know they're so cheap you can go through so many of them. So what I'm doing right here is I'm going right over the areas where I did the sharpie and just slowly looking at it and making sure it penetrates into those little areas. These finishes are pretty thin, so the black finish itself is, uh, you know, maybe five thousandths of an inch at the most, maybe seven thousandths. So I want to be able to, uh, you know, get this thing built up in a relatively quick way. Chase it with some glue boost right here. This stuff is great. It doesn't powder up, foam, do any of that stuff, and it allows me to get right back on it and come in with a thicker fill. So now this fill is going to be more of what you call a typical drop fill. I'm going to start filling up the finish so it's proud of the, of the rest of the guitar. So it's sticking up a little bit taller, you know, maybe ten thousandths taller than the rest of the guitar. And I want to get no bubbles in there, make sure everything's even. And I'm going to come back with this uh, electrical tape, one of my favorites. No glue will stick to it. I can stretch it, I can cut it into tiny pieces, I can put it anywhere I want. So I stretch it really super, super tight. That way no glue or sandpaper or anything else can leak underneath it. You can see the ding right there that I'm working with. And um, you get a little triangle around here. And once that's all level and tight to the finish, I'm going to come back with what my little custom scraper I use. It's a razor blade. I put it on a belt sander. And I just make a little oval out of it. This allows me to pinpoint exactly where I want to go. So I'm not forced into scraping a whole bunch of stuff that I don't want to. As I said, the finish is super thin, so I don't want to go through it. So I'm being very careful, watching where I'm going, just working slowly. And if I get too far off the edge, it hits the electrical tape, and it's very forgiving. Electrical tape is so thick, and it won't cut through. So there's a little more finer thing right there, and I just do a little touch-up. Same with the oval scraper I was using before. Now I'm going to use my other style scraper. I take electrical tape and I put it on two sides of a razor blade. And the trick with this is it allows me to get a good finish cut that's level. Now what you want to do, the technique here, is you want to be able to bend the razor blade. By bending the razor blade outwards, we kind of do this right here, so the middle parts pointing towards me I can get that to level in right through the finish and not even touch the electrical tape that's on the outsides. So it gives me a real real solid way of getting it. Now it's it's a little bit of technique. You could use sandpaper, but it allows me over the years just to get a quicker level job before I run into the sandpaper and, and finish up that route. So there we go. So now things start feeling level. I like to rub my fingers over it just to make sure it's not sticking up proud like it was before. So when I run into uh, you know my 320s, 400, 600 grits, 800 grits, 1200 grits, 
everything's going to be pretty level and I won't burn through the finish. Nothing worse than burning through a polyester finish and then trying to touch that up. It doesn't work. Okay, so we're getting that done. Feels smooth to me. Pretty close. So I'm going to come back with 800 grit. The trick with this is you want to be able to get a nice, even level sanding. So I have a tiny little wood block in there and I'm not even laying it flat. I'm just basically using the front edge of it and just sanding it flush as possibly as I can to take out any little bubbles or any little rises. I want a dull gray cloudy fill that's level with the finish. So going with the 800 grit right there allows me to feather in the outside of it as well and that's what I'm doing now. So now I I can touch the rest of the finish and go on the edges and and get a feather feel. Now it feels really smooth right there. I don't want to touch the corners too much. You got to be careful. The corners are the most weakest area of almost any finish on any guitar. So you want to leave that alone as much as you can. Now I'm going to go to 1200 grit and this is wet or dry. So I'd like some soapy water and just put a little bit on there. And I'll use my fingers on this one because I want to be able to feel exactly what I'm doing. So I'm moving it back and forth. I can kind of feel there's a little bit of a rise right there. So I'm pinpointing that. And now I'm going to touch the corner just a little bit. Just, just enough to give it that round over. And I took it over to Mr. Buffer and I buffed it all out and I'm just putting a little bit of rubbing compound and some wax right now on it. And uh, this thing is just about invisible as you can tell right there. You really can't see it. It's gone. So you can see a close up there. This is afterwards with a pro finish, fill and finish. It's wonderful stuff. All their, all their products from Gear Up is wonderful i love it love it love it so there'll be some more future videos coming up real soon so hang in there this is tracy from guitar tech corner take care